guys, this is Mr. Millings, and in this video, we are going to learn how to calculate percent yield. So what is percent yield and how does it work? Well, it says right here that percent yield is a comparison between the amount of substance that you obtain in a chemical reaction performed through experimentation, which is called the actual yield, and the amount of substance obtained through the stoichiometry process, which is called the theoretical yield. So, so far in these videos, we have been learning how to calculate theoretical yields. We've been running the stoichiometry process through uh, a chemical reaction and have been determining how many grams or moles that have been, been able to be produced uh, from uh, uh, an amount of grams or moles of a, of a given product or a given reactant. And so we've been learning how to calculate theoretical yields, okay? And so percent yield, it says right here again, is a comparison between the amount of a substance you obtain in a chemical reaction performed through doing the actual experiment, and this is called the actual yield, and the amount of substance that we obtain through the stoichiometry process, which is called the theoretical yield. So when you go into the laboratory and you start performing these chemical reactions, the amount that a product that you obtain is called the actual yield. And what we've been calculated so far are called the theoretical yields. Let's take a look at an example down here. In this example, if we go into the lab and we measure out 3.50 moles of sodium on a scale, and we measure out 2.25 moles of chlorine, and we put it in this little flask right here, and if we mix these two together, if I were to drop this 3.5 moles of sodium into this flask of 2.25 moles of chlorine gas, it might look something like this right here. And at that point, a chemical reaction is going to occur. Well, actually, you're going to have to put a little drop of water into this little beaker, uh, this little flask here to get the chemical reaction going. However, a chemical reaction is going to occur. And what ends up being produced is sodium chloride or table salt. Okay, so if you take 3.50 moles of sodium and put it into this little flask that contains 2.25 moles of chlorine gas in the lab, and a chemical reaction occurs, you're going to end up with some table salt that you see right here. And if we put this table salt on a scale and measured it, and it comes out to be 200.2 grams, this right here is called the actual yield. This is the amount that was produced in the chemical reaction in the laboratory. Now, if you take a look right here, we can see the chemical reaction taking place. It tells us that two moles of sodium is going to react with one mole of chlorine to produce two moles of sodium chloride. And when we run the numbers, when we do the stoichiometry on this and we take into consideration the limiting reactant, which we learned in an earlier video, we can see that 205 grams of sodium chloride should theoretically be produced when we do this, this, uh, uh, this chemical reaction in the lab. All right, however, if you take a look, our actual results come up with 200.2 grams. Our theoretical results come up with 205 grams. And so due to human error, due to some instrument error, et cetera, uh, our actual yield is going to be a little bit different from our theoretical yield. And so what we can learn to calculate is called a percent yield. A percent yield compares two things. It compares what you should get. Uh, well, actually, it compares what you're getting in the lab to what you should be getting. All right. It compares the actual yield, what you get in the lab by uh, during the experiment, to what you should be getting by running the stoichiometry. All right, so percent yield compares these two things right here. What you should be getting in the lab to what, I'm sorry, what you get in the lab to what you should be getting by doing the stoichiometry. And in this video, we are going to learn how to, to calculate a percent yield. And so you can see right here, if you wanted to calculate the percent yield of this example right here, you can see our actual yield is 200.2 grams. You can see our theoretical yield is 200 and five grams and so we just simply take this divided by this times a hundred percent and we would end up with our percent yield so let's take a look at a few examples where we learn how to calculate a percent yield okay so let's take a look at this first example it says for the balanced chemical equation shown below if the reaction of 20.7 grams of sodium peroxide and 10.5 grams of water produces 19.1 grams of sodium hydroxide in the lab 
what is the percent yield? So in this problem, we're asked to find the percent yield. It looks like we already know the actual yield. It tells us that in the lab, 19.1 grams of this stuff right here was produced. So 19.1 grams was produced in the lab. So the fact that it says in the lab right here, that is a good indication that this is the actual yield. And so we're asked to find the percent yield right we're asked to find the percent yield so we have to first find the theoretical yield we first have to find the, the theoretical yield once we do that we can plug it into this little formula and find our percent yield so here we go in this problem right here it looks like we're we have 20.7 grams of sodium peroxide reacting with 10.5 grams of water and we want to know how many grams of this stuff will be produced in other words what is our theoretical yield so what we have to do here is find our limiting reactant first and determine how much sodium hydroxide will be produced so in this problem here we have 20.7 grams of sodium peroxide and we have 10.5 grams of H2O and so what we need to do with each one of these is determine how many grams of sodium hydroxide is going to be produced. So we have to run the stoichiometry process for each one of these to determine how many grams of sodium hydroxide will be produced. So right here we know that one mole of Na2O2 is 77.98 grams of Na2O2. And if you're wondering where I got this number from, this is the molar mass of sodium peroxide. If we take two oxygens and the mass of two sodiums and add them together, we will get this right here. All right, then we take a look at our mole ratio. We see four moles of sodium hydroxide to two moles of sodium peroxide. So we have four moles of NaOH to two moles of Na2O2. And last but not least, we now need to multiply by the molar mass of sodium hydroxide. The molar mass of sodium hydroxide comes out to be 40 grams of NaOH for every mole of NaOH. And once again, we get this number from the periodic table of elements, okay? And so when we put this in our calculator, we end up with 21.2 grams of NaOH. But this isn't our final answer. We now need to do the same thing right here. We know that one mole of water is 18.02 grams of H2O. We then compare our uh, the stuff we're trying to find to what is given in this problem. So we have four moles of NaOH to two moles of water. And last, we're gonna multiply by the molar mass of sodium hydroxide from the periodic table, which is 40 grams per mole. And when we put this all in our calculator, we end up with 46.6 grams of NaOH. And in an earlier video, we learned that when you're given both reactants here and you're asked to find how much of a product is produced, we're always gonna go with the lower of the two values it looks like our sodium peroxide is the limiting reactant. It's going to run out first. So this is our theoretical yield. So this is our theoretical yield right here. And so now that we know our theoretical yield, we can find our percent yield pretty simply. To get our percent yield, we take our actual yield over our theoretical yield times 100%. And so we take our actual yield, which is 19.1 grams. That's what they got in the lab. We're going to divide this by our theoretical yield, what they should be getting, 21.2 grams times 100%. And when we put this in our calculator, we end up getting 90.0%. So we ended up with a percent yield of 90.0. What does this answer mean? Well, what this means is when they went in the lab and did this chemical reaction right here, what they ended up with, this 19.1 grams, is 10% less than what they should be getting. And that could be due to some human error, it could be due to some instrument error, or just some general error. All right, so what they ended up with was about 10% of what they should have been getting. All right, and so your percent yield in ideal situations should be 100%, but they ended up with 90. Let's take a look at another example.
Okay, in this example, it says in the reaction below, a lab worker had a 92.5% yield from the reaction of 125 grams of potassium with 65 grams of aluminum oxide. We need to determine the yield of potassium oxide in the lab. Okay, so in this problem here, what we're asked to figure out is the yield of potassium oxide in the lab. Well, we're asked to figure out the actual yield here. Okay, if it says in the lab, uh, if they said they performed the experiment, then you're asked to figure out the actual yield. So we need to know the percent yield, which we do know, and then we need to know the theoretical yield, which we don't know. So we have to figure that out. We're first going to have to calculate that. So in this problem, it tells us we have 125 grams of potassium reacting with 65 grams of aluminum oxide. And so we need to figure out how many grams of this stuff will be produced if we have 125 grams of this reacting with 65 grams of this and so once we figure out our theoretical yield we can plug it into this formula and figure out or determine what the actual yield was in the laboratory so in this problem here we have 125 grams of potassium and we have 65 grams of aluminum oxide and so what we need to do first is we need to work on this one right here we need to figure out how many grams of potassium oxide will be produced from 125 grams of potassium? So the first thing we need to do is we know that one mole of potassium is 39.10 grams of potassium from our periodic table of elements. Then we know our mole ratio is 3 moles of K2O to 6 moles of potassium. And then we need to multiply by the molar mass of K2O, which is 94.2 grams of K2O per mole. And so when we take 125 divided by 39.10 times 3 divided by 6 times 94.2, we end up with 150.6 grams of potassium oxide. But this is not our theoretical yield yet. We need to now figure out how many grams of potassium oxide can be produced from 65 grams of aluminum oxide. So the first thing we're going to do here is divide by our molar mass of Al2O3. We know that one mole of Al2O3 is 101.96 grams of Al2O3. Now take a look at our mole ratio. We have three moles of potassium oxide to just one mole of aluminum oxide. So we have three moles of K2O for every one mole of Al2O3. And last but not least, we need to multiply by the, the molar mass of potassium oxide, which is 94.2 grams per mole. And so when we put this in our calculator, we end up with 180.2 grams of K2O. And so it looks like we're going to go with our lower of the two answers here. It looks like if we have 125 grams of potassium reacting with 65 grams of aluminum oxide, then it's only going to produce this many grams of potassium because once this, or potassium oxide, because once this stuff runs out right here, once the potassium runs out, you can't produce any more than this right here. All right, so potassium ends up being the limiting reactant. And so now that we know our theoretical yield, this right here is our theoretical yield. We can quite simply now figure out the actual yield. Now to get our actual yield, like it says right here, we're going to take our percent yield, which is 92.5%, times our theoretical yield, which we just found out to be 150.6 grams, and we're going to divide this by our, our we're going to divide this by 100%. And so when we put this in our calculator, our final answer is going to be 139.3 grams of potassium oxide. So it looks like in the lab, they ended up getting 139.3 grams of potassium oxide when they carried out this little reaction right here. Let's take a look at another example. In this final example, it says in the reaction below, a lab worker obtains 275 grams of iron 3 oxide from the reaction of iron 3 chloride and magnesium oxide. If lab worker's percent yield was 97%, 
then what was the theoretical yield of iron three oxide? So in this problem here, it looks like we're trying to determine the theoretical yield of, uh, of this chemical reaction when we know the actual yield and we know the percent yield. So this is more of an easier type of problem here. To get our theoretical yield here, it's simple. We just read this word problem. It says that 275 grams uh, of iron three oxide uh, was produced from iron three chloride and magnesium oxide. It tells us also the percent yield was 97%. Okay, so when we have this type of problem here where we're asked to find the theoretical yield when we know the actual yield and percent yield, it's simple. We just take the actual yield. It says in the lab they obtained 275 grams. We're going to divide this by the percent yield, which was 97%. And then we're going to multiply by 100%. Of course, the percent signs are going to cancel. And so when we put this in our calculator, it looks like we are going to end up getting a theoretical yield of 284 grams of iron three oxide. Okay, so that's how we're going to calculate the theoretical yield when you know the actual yield and percent yield. So if you like what you see, go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right hand corner. That's going to subscribe you to my channel and feel free to leave any comments in the uh, in the comments section down below. And I really hope you guys found this helpful.